Okay, so you've been asked to find voltage one, voltage two, voltage three, voltage, uh, pardon me, current one, current two, and current three that's going through this uh, circuit that's here. All right, in the circuit you have a five volt voltage source, you have the current that's actually flowing into resistor number one, which is called I1, we'll call it I1, and the voltage across that resistor, which is V1. You have the current that's flowing through resistor number two and the voltage as seen across that would be uh, voltage two. We have voltage three, which is across resistor number three and the current flowing through that is I3. Our three resistor values are 1500, bring that down a little bit, 1500 for resistor number one, uh, 4700 for resistor number two and 1000 for resistor number three. Now the easiest way to go about solving this problem is to start first and realize this. This 5 volt voltage source, as we may have indicated or we indicated before, is that this 5 volt voltage source is in parallel with all three of these resistors. It's in parallel with resistor 1, resistor 2, and resistor 3. Because the voltage source is in parallel with all three resistors, that means that this voltage that's here is the voltage that will be seen across all three of these resistors. And the reason we can say that is because there's no resistors in these areas here, right? And so this voltage source here is connected directly to this, which connects directly to all those. On both ends, it's connected to all of those components, and so therefore they're in parallel. And so therefore then that makes it easy our V1 is equal to our V2, which is equal to our V3, and all of those are equal to 5 volts. Now, given that that's the case then, if we're looking to find out what our current going through all those resistors would be, then that current going through all of those resistors then, if we remember uh, using Ohm's law, we have that V is equal to IR. So if we're looking for the current that's going through that, let's start off first by saying V1 is equal to uh, I1 times R1, right? And so if we're looking for the current, then that means V1 divided by R1 is going to give us our I1, okay, based off of... Ohm's law, this is what Ohm's law says, okay? So, therefore then, if we take that 5 volts and divide it by the resistor value from number 1, that's the 1500, move this up a little bit, 1500 ohms then, that means I1 then, so that's 5 divided by 1500, And that gives us an answer of 3.33 milliamps, or the same thing as 3.33 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. Okay, both of those are the same answers. So that's a current that's going through resistor number one okay for resistor number two it's going to be equal to V2 divided by R2 which is equal to I2 all right we know that I2 uh, pardon me V2 is 5 volts and so we're gonna have that 5 volts divided by 4700 And that gives us a current then of 1.064 times 10 times 10 to the negative 3 amps, which is the same thing as 1.064 milliamps all right so that's our current going through there okay and if we were to look at V3 then divided by R3 then would give us our current that's going through resistor number three 
So we know that we have V3 is equal to 5, and that's going to be divided by 1,000. And so therefore then this is, let's do 5.0 times 10 to the negative 3. 5 times 10 to the negative 3 amps, which is equal to 5 milliamps. Okay? And so those are the three currents that are going through resistor number one, resistor number two, and resistor number three. And we know that the voltage across all three resistors, voltage across resistor number one, resistor number two, and resistor number three is equal to five volts because all three components here are in parallel with the five volt voltage source. All right, so that concludes this problem